When home brewing, there are three main ways to collect your wort for the boil. The first is extract brewing. This is the simplest method where 100% of the fermentable sugars come from pre-made concentrated wort, called malt extract. The second is a partial mash brew. This is a technique used in extract brewing where you replace some of your extract with malt and hold the malt at mashing temperature to extract the sugars. The third method to collect your wort is all grain brewing. This is what we will be covering in this video. In all grain brewing, all of the fermentable sugars come from the malt through the mashing process. You take crushed malt, add hot water to change the starch into sugar, and drain away the resulting sugary liquid, which is your wort. From there, the process is similar for all three styles of brewing. You will boil, add your hops and any other preferred items, cool, and ferment to produce beer. The first step is to determine your recipe and gather your materials. There are a lot of great resources online for pre-made recipes and calculators to build your own. Step 2. Get malt ready for the mash. For your first all grain brew, you can buy your malt already crushed. This will allow you to see what the grain crush should look like. Once you get more comfortable with the process, you can get more hands on and crush the grain yourself. With a good crush, most kernels should be broken into two to four pieces. The goal of the crush is to break the malt kernels open so that the hot strike water can dissolve the starchy inside. Step 3. Get strike water up to temperature and transfer to the mash tun. Make sure to consider that you will lose some heat when transferring the water to the mash tun and when you add your malt. You can use a mash infusion, strike water, and rest schedule calculator on brewersfriend.com to determine what temperature your water will need to be. Step 4. Mash in. Pour your malt into your strike water. Make sure to give it a good stir to try and make the temperature in the mash tun as equal as possible. Cover your mash tun and let it sit for about 5 minutes to let the temperature in the mash tun equalize. Step 5. Take the initial temperature of the mash and start a timer. Usually the mash lasts about 60 minutes. The hot water is converting the starch in the malt into both fermentable and non-fermentable sugars. Throughout the mash we will keep an eye on the temperature and we will record the temperature of the mash every 20 minutes. We will also stir the mash after 20 and 35 minutes to try and promote an even temperature throughout. After that we usually do not stir because we want the malt to settle over the false bottom of the mash tun. This will allow the grain husks to settle and filter out small particles so they do not get in the wort. Step 6. Heat sparge water and add to your hot liquor tank. While your malt is resting at your mashing temperature, heat your sparge water up to temp. Step 7. Determine when the mash is complete. Typically the mash will run about 60 minutes, but some can be done quicker and others will take longer. You can run a starch conversion test to confirm the mash is complete. Take a small sample of the wort in a small white bowl. Make sure that the grain is filtered out of the sample. Add a few drops of Itafor to the sample. During the mash, the enzymes should convert all of the available starches to sugars. When there is complete starch conversion, the iodine will remain a reddish brown color, indicating no starch is present. Step 8. Recirculate mash and set the grain bed. After the mash is complete, you can start the recirculation process to set the grain bed. This will clean up the wort and set you up for successful sparge. Step 9. Sparge. To start your continuous sparge, slowly open the valve on your mash tun and let the wort start trickling into the kettle. Collect the wort at a rate such that it takes about 60 minutes to collect the entire volume. The basic idea with continuous sparging is to apply water to the top of the grain bed at the same rate it drains from the mash tun. You should heat your sparge water to the point that, as you sparge, the temperature of the grain bed approaches 170 degrees Fahrenheit. A more technical way to know when to stop collecting wort is to, to monitor when you've gotten everything you reasonably can from the grain bed. The easiest way to do this is to take the specific gravity of your late runnings, the stream of wort you are collecting from the grain bed, and wait until they fall to about 1.008. Step 10. Boil wort. Make sure to keep a close eye on the wort once it gets to a boil. 
The wort tends to foam up and want to foam over initially. Once you are boiling, start your timer. Your recipe will specify how long the boil should go. Most boils are between 60 and 90 minutes. Step 11. Add hops. Add your hop additions to the boil. Note that on a lot of recipes, they specify times such as 60 minutes. This would mean that you would add the hops with 60 minutes remaining in the boil. Step 12. Add whirl flock and any other desired items. The whirl flock is added to encourage the precipitation of haze causing materials such as proteins and beta glucans. Examples of other materials would be orange peel or coriander like you use in wit beer. Usually these are added within the last 15 minutes of the boil. Step 13. Add cooling coil. This is our method to cool the wort once the boil is over. It is important to cool the wort down within a timely manner of the end of the boil. This is to minimize any bacteria and for the protein in the wort to clump together and settle out. It is important to add the cooling coil with 15 minutes remaining in the boil so that the coil will be sanitized. Step 14. Flame out. Turn off the heater and cool the wort. From this point on, it is very important that anything that comes in contact with the wort must be sanitized. You are not as concerned before the boil because the boiling process will actually sanitize. Step 15. Sanitize fermenter. Make sure to sanitize any surface that will come in contact with the wort. Our preferred sanitizer is StarSan. Step 16. Transfer wort to fermenter. Make sure that the transfer hose has been sanitized. We also use a sanitized mesh bag to filter out any proteins or hop particulate. Step 17. Oxygenate wort. You need to add oxygen to your wort because a significant amount of it comes out during a vigorous boil. Oxygen is important for yeast health and growth during fermentation. We use an oxygen tank with a diffusion stone to add our oxygen. Step 18. Pitch yeast. Yeast is an active living organism that feeds on oxygen and sugars in the wort and as a byproduct produces carbon dioxide and alcohol. If using starters on a stir plate, make sure to remove the stir bar before pitching. Step 19. Cover fermenter and put on airlock. An airlock allows carbon dioxide to escape while keeping air out. We use vodka in our airlock because it is sanitary. Step 20. Set up your temperature controller if you are using one. The fun part, cleaning. Step 21. Clean up. Cleanliness is key and it is very important to producing good beer.